winters on record, but already we're looking forward to summer. This is Drizzle. On tonight's programme, child safety seats. Are you putting your kids in danger? Find out if Penny's rally preparation is a thumping success. But first, banish the winter blues and start dreaming of the summer with our completely impractical weekend sports cars. From the darkness and midst of time emerged a bug-eyed mud skipper called the Lotus 7 that went on to thrill generations of motoring maniacs and lives on as a caterer. From this evolved the Lotus Elise, a more advanced creation but with the same spirit of adventure. Then unexpectedly from the same mould came the VX220, so similar to the Elise it could have been cloned but with a Vauxhall badge. And tonight on Driven we ask which one of these weekend sports cars can take its rightful place as the best of the bunch? For the new Elise, Lotus went back to its customers to find out how the old model could be improved. And the result is a more practical, easy to live with car. Importantly, with handling that's not so twitchy on the limit. So, it might be a bit more civilised, but has the Elise gone soft, I wonder? I was rather taken by the VX220 when I drove it last summer, not least because it shares some of its DNA with the Lotus. Underneath, though, it's a heavily modified Elise, and inside it's got a lot more creature comforts, and, of course, that lovely 2.2-litre Vauxhall engine. It does make you wonder, though, if Lotus have shot themselves in the foot by selling their best trade secrets to a direct competitor. There's none of that cloak and dagger stuff with this car. Caterham owners are a faithful bunch, and if you buy one of these, it guarantees lifelong membership to a fanatical club of motoring lunatics. The Caterham originally started life in 1957 as the Lotus 7, and you can build one yourself. But these days, they come with catalytic converters, 16 valve, and even fuel injection. But don't let that put you off. This is the closest thing you'll get to driving a motorbike with four wheels. Up front is the same engine that sends the Lotus Elise down the road, but in this car, it takes it from 0 to 60 in under six seconds. Woohoo! Flaps down, take off! Later on, we'll see which one of these motorised roller skates is the most practical, or the least impractical, depending on how you look at it. But first, here's the real reason most people buy these cars. Gentlemen, start your engines. Lots of people buy cars like these for track days. Race events open to the public at circuits across the UK. So for our first round in the Driven 100, we're going to see how well our three stripped-down sports cars can handle the track. Yep, we're going to have our very own two-lap race around the Stowe Circuit at Silverstone. And Mike, I see you've bagged pole position. Where's my car? Penny, you're a rally driver, so you're mm. back there. Oh, cheers, mate. Where's my car, then? You'll need these. What, all the way back there, brewer? You're a touring car driver, and you've got to give us a chance. Right, may the best driver win. Come on in, let's get on with it. Performance-wise, these cars are pretty well matched, but they all have different handling characteristics. And on this test track, we aim to find out which of our sportsters is the most rewarding to drive. But none of us are taking the competitive element too seriously. Are we, guys? Go. Turning, 
things I remember, this car weighing 550 kilograms, which is about as much as a bag of crisps. Turn in, come on, you little. It just understeers all over the place. So you, have, uh, so you have to get on the loud pedal. And I've got Jason right behind me already. Jason looks like he's going to get a rise on me. And we've got him. He's flown it. He's gone wide. <laughs> Look at the power he's got, but he hasn't got the handling or the braking ability. So we'll. Uh... <laughs> oh, he's done me on the inside. I'm so worried Mike's going to spin in front of me. He's got a right tank slapper on. Well, we're going to win the race. Well done. Stop blubbing, Brewer. There are no real losers here. All three of these cars are brilliant on the track. The Caterham's a hoot if brute force and oversteer are to your taste, and there's nothing in it between the more advanced mid-engine designs from Lotus and Vauxhall. The Elise has slightly sharper steering, but the VX220's got ABS, which will stop the brakes locking up in the wet. Both have great gearboxes and fantastic chassis, which offer predictable and controllable oversteer on the limit. Buy any of these, take them on a track day, and you'll have the time of your life. Guaranteed. Gone are the days when we all used to loll around on the back seat of mum and dad's car. In the mid 60s, child seats were introduced. 35 years on, and today's parents confidently strap in their youngsters, believing their child to be safe. However, there are 16,000 children injured in car accidents every year. And even with a child restrained in a car, there is still a 75% chance of being seriously injured or killed in a 30 mile an hour crash. It's not enough just to buy your little ones a car seat. You've got to get it fitted properly, and that's not as easy as you'd think. Independent research shows that 80% of child seats are not installed correctly, and 90% of parents admit they have problems fitting the seats. Instructions that are difficult to follow can lead to incorrect routing of the seat belt around the child seat. A common mistake is to rest the frame of the child seat against the belt buckle rather than above it. This can cause buckle crunching and under impact the belt buckle may shatter and release the child seat. Loose adult belts are a major problem which allow the child seat to move around. And finally a loose harness within the child seat can be disastrous in an accident. To see just how serious these problems really are, I've got with me Chris Patience from the AA. He's a child safety expert, and we're going to conduct our own little survey in this supermarket car park. This seat really is too loose. It was fitted correctly, but not correctly for this particular car. That seat really isn't tight enough in the car. Are you shocked at what you've just seen? Yeah. yeah. It's just all over the place. And sideways. It's one of the best child seats I've seen. Oh my god. And I'm hardly I'm hardly pulling it at all. Chris, I'm really horrified by what we've just seen. Is this normal? It's disappointing, but I'm not surprised. We've done similar checks in the past and it's quite typical to find eight out of ten seats misfitted. Three out of those ten seats seriously misfitted. And we've seen much the same today. Yeah, they're really grim statistics, but why are we getting it so wrong? I think a lot of, res of responsibility lies with the car seat manufacturers. Firstly, they need to make sure that their instruction manuals are a lot clearer to, to read. They need to make sure that the, cars are really, really sim the car seats are really, really simple to fit. And also, they need to make sure that those people in the shops who are selling their car seats know how to fit them and they can advise parents buying car seats on how to fit them properly in their car. And also, finally, the most important point is that the, 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 the car seat is right for the make and the model of their car. What we need is a universal standard. In the US, new safety regulations come into force in 2002, and they'll ensure that every single child car seat is compatible with every model of new car. A standard latch system on each car seat attaches to a universal buckle on every car, and that makes them much easier to fit. The British equivalent is called Isofix, 
ironically much like the original bucket seats developed back in the 60s. Attached directly to the car bodywork using special fixings makes it almost impossible to fit incorrectly. Unfortunately, the system is still in its infancy. Currently, if you walk into a retailer to buy an Isofix seat, you can't because they're vehicle specific and only available in some new cars. If you want one, you're going to have to order one directly through your car manufacturer. But the European crash testing body has shown that there are still problems with this system. In the UK, they're currently only available with two fixing points, whereas to be completely safe, they should have three. At the moment, the car manufacturers and the seat manufacturers are battling it out amongst themselves to see who'll take responsibility for these modifications and will let you know the outcome. But as most of us drive second-hand cars, the Isofix system is unlikely to become the norm for five or six years. So in the meantime, all we can do is make sure that our child seats are fitted properly. There are hundreds of child seats and each one has to be fitted differently depending on which car it's going into. So we can't show you the right way to fit your seat. But if you're worried, here is what you can do. Read the manufacturer's instruction book. It sounds obvious, but it will help you if you follow it. Phone the manufacturer of your seat. They should be willing to help you. All have helplines and some may send a representative to check the seat in person. Contact a road safety officer via your local council. They'll be able to advise you. And if you're looking to buy a new car seat, make sure you do as much research as you can before hitting the shops. Again, contact your road safety officer via your local council. They'll give you unbiased advice on what car seat best fits your car. When you go to a retailer, make sure they're trained in seat fitting and make sure they show you how to fit the car seat properly in your car. There's more useful information on our website, forecar.co.uk. That's forecar.co.uk. Bag yourself a ringside seat and find out why Penny's rally preparation is a knockout success. And the boys get a good hosing down. Cheers, Pen. Well, you deserved it.